what we're going to talk about today is uh, some specific research that we conducted a few years back on different bedding types, and uh, I'll explain a little bit why it was so important to us in New Jersey in just a moment. Um, but as you can imagine, we have a pretty high uh, density of uh, animal farms uh, in New Jersey, and the equine industry is becoming a very important one for us. Uh, so today I'm going to speak about a presentation, uh, equine bedding materials effect on the physical and chemical properties of composted materials. Well, the equine industry in New Jersey, as I said, is a very important industry. Um, the last census that we had conducted had over 7,200 farms that classified themselves as equine farms with a reported 42,500 animals. Um, this is the animals that were actually reported uh, by the census, so you can imagine there's several one and two farm uh, horse farm operations that weren't recorded. Um, so we have a tremendous equine industry in the state. Um, a survey conducted in 2007 predicted that this is a $1.1 billion industry in New Jersey. Um, and our industry is so important to, um, our equine industry is so important to livestock folks that we're really always constantly trying to push the envelope about how many animals and how high of a stocking density we can have on our operations to make, the, uh, make that economically viable for us. Um, as a fact of this, 75% of our equine operations in New Jersey house less than eight animals. We have a lot of small farms as well as some large-scale uh, large operations. And a little bit more than 50% of these farms reported they're less, on, less than 10 acres. Um, so as you can imagine, we have a lot of horse farms on a very small, uh, small scale, and we're really pushing the uh, threshold that these, uh, that these smaller operations can manage. Um, just by some, uh, just by a little bit historical uh, research, a typical horse generates about approximately 50 pounds of manure and uh, urine a day. And uh, some research that we conducted a few years ago uh, also suggests that when we're using some of these bedding materials, we can do 2.7 to 3.0 kilograms per day of additional waste in the form of bedding materials that are put into the stalls for most of our uh, equine operations. This translates to about six pounds of additional uh, waste that we're trying to that we are generating, and, and we need to figure out a way to get rid of um, in a responsible manner. Next slide, please. This is a way um, when we do work, we uh, we often try to give a visual demonstration of how important this issue might be to our operations. So we came up with this. This is the old Giant Stadium. Uh, I know it says Jets in the corner, but I'm a Giants fan, so we always say Giants Stadium. And so we asked the question, and next slide, please, how long do you think it would take for the manure generated just by our horse operations in the state to uh, fill this op uh, giant stadium full of manure? And the answer is, next slide, in a little bit more than a year and a half, we can actually fill up Giant Stadium with manure. And so you can see this is a, a very real problem a very real issue um, in New Jersey, especially when it comes to our smaller equine operations. Next slide. So we conducted a study um, in 2009 looking at several of the typical bedding materials that are used in our equine operations. Um, and we looked at wood shavings, straw, pelletized wood, and the pelletized straw materials. These uh, pelletized materials are becoming quite popular um, uh, with a, a certain number of claims that are being made about their uh, increased absorbency and uh, ease of use and things of that nature. So they've become very popular. And these are the four main bedding materials that we use in, in the Northeast and, and through most of our equine operations, I would imagine. Uh, composting has, uh, in fact, become a manure disposal option that really has a lot of benefits and folks up in the Northeast are really interested in, in uh, using as their primary management. Um, and the reasons why are, uh, a lot of research shows that there's an increased volume reduction from composting these bedding materials. And we can also increase the concentration of our nutrients and make it a more viable uh, land application uh, to make it a, a positive uh, input rather than a negative input that we're trying to get rid of. Um, and we have conducted tons and tons of research over the years on most of our other livestock species. We've done a lot of dairy research and we've done a lot of research on uh, beef cattle and such. A very limited research has been conducted um, on composting equine manure and what benefits and uh, what problems might arise from using these materials as a compost. Next slide, please. So for this study, I'm going to explain what we did really quick, and I'm going to uh, kind of dive into some of the details of the study. For this study, what we did, we had four treatments. We had wood shavings, 
pelletized wood material. We had straw, just regular long straw, and we had pelletized straw. And uh, we had three replications for each of these treatments, and uh, we planted it in a traditional kind of experimental method with randomized complete block design with each of the beddings being replicated three times. And we did some standard statistical analyses um, to try to look for some of these differences. Next slide. So what we did for the study was we had groups of three horses that were placed on one of these bedding materials, and they were kept in the stalls for 16 hours a day, and we collected manure from each of these stalls for 18 hours, um, for 18 days rather, excuse me. Um, part of this was another study that we conducted where we really wanted to see how efficient these bedding materials were as far as ease of use and uh, how much more bedding we may have added with one of the materials. So we were also looking at a separate study on the generation of the manure, of manure based on using one of these materials. We'll probably talk about that study one day um, on a future webinar. So the stalls were cleaned daily and we monitored how, how much time it took us to uh, keep clean those stalls. And we weighed the material separately and we stored it separately for the composting portion. Next slide, please. So we had four replicate piles that were constructed. Um, and just to keep it in uh, units, they were approximately 600 pounds of fresh weight for, uh, uh, per pile. And we had temperature sensors excuse me, placed in the center of each pile. We really wanted to keep an accurate um, monitoring of the, uh, the mid-pile temperature. And we did turn the pile three times during the study, and, and it was basically once a month that we turned these uh, piles and the, terminated the study at 100 days. And then we uh, took analyses of the, of the materials. Next slide, please. We did some traditional um, data collection. We're looking at bulk density of the material. We wanted to really uh, have a good understanding of the dry matter mass. And we want to look at some volume uh, reduction through composting as well. And we did some chemical analyses, including uh, forms of nitrogen, uh, plant available nutrients, uh, and a few other carbon to nitrogen ratio and such that we really wanted to see what was going on in the chemical analyses of the compost pile. Next slide. This slide here just gives you a visual uh, demonstration of what the piles look like at the completion of the composting process. And you can see the, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, at the, at the beginning of the composting process. And you can see there's uh, some, some uh, characteristic differences in bulk density and things of that nature that that you can really tell the pelletized straw um, and the pelletized wood tend to be a finer material, um, while the raw materials tend to be a little bit heavier, a little bit bulkier, and uh, took up a little bit more volume just by their size of the particles that were there. In another study, we did look at the particle uh, distribution, but I'm not going to report that today. Um, this is to give you a good visual demonstration of the, of the material and what, what it looked like coming out of the uh, stalls. Next slide, please. Uh, real quick, I wanted to uh, explain some of the, of the findings that we had in this study. Uh, temperature was a really important indicator for us of the compost, and, and as I'm sure you're aware, the uh, US EPA guidelines for composting to have pathogen uh, destruction is 55 degrees Celsius for 15 days. And so that's a really good indicator of how well the pile is being composted and how well the material uh, went through uh, the degradation of the, of the pathogens that we might be concerned of and the, in the, uh, any kind of potential issues. In this study, as you can see, and I'll just uh, point out um, the, where there's a large dip in the center of each graph, that was the, um, where we actually turned the piles. We removed the, the thermal couples from the center of the pile, and every time we turned it, we had a sharp drop followed by a pretty rapid increase in the uh, compost temperature. So in this study, as you can see, the, the blue line is the pelletized straw, and it actually was the only product in this study that maintained the US EPA guidelines, and it maintained a temperature of 64 degrees Celsius for more than 15 days during the study. Um, and then most of them maintained a temperature above ambient temperature throughout the study, with the exception of the wood shaving. And we did notice a pretty strong trend towards the pelletized straw and the long straw maintaining a higher temperature, with uh, the pelletized straw um, reaching a, a high temperature of 64 and a half degrees Celsius. The long straw reached 59 and a half degrees Celsius, and the pelletized wood and the wood material maintained a temperature around 55 degrees Celsius. 
So there was a trend, but it wasn't statistically uh, significant, other than the fact that the pelletized or the uh, pelletized straw did indeed maintain temperature long enough to be considered true compost um, by the uh, definition given by the EPA. Next slide, please. Now in New Jersey, the probably the thing that's the most important for us is a reduction in the pile mass and subsequently the pile volume. And in this study, the straw materials did have a significant lower final dry mass of approximately 42% versus around 29 to 30% for the wood materials. And although the decrease in final pile mass was significantly less for the pelletized straw and the long straw materials, there were no significant difference in the final reduction in volume in terms of a percentage basis. Um, there was a strong numerical trend towards the pelletized straw and the long straw having a, a higher volume reduction, but it was not significant according to our, our analysis. Uh, but you can imagine a, a difference between 42% and 30% in terms of haulage fees and things of that nature may be significant uh, for a specific operation. Next slide, please. When we analyzed for available phosphorus, and phosphorus obviously is a very large concern for us uh, in terms of our environmental quality issues that we may have in our, with water, um, we didn't notice any significant changes um, in the phosphorus content other than what you would might expect of, a, of an increased concentration from the decrease in the pile volume. So just as, a, as an issue of volume reduction in the piles, we did have a, a slight increase in phosphorus, um, available phosphorus in the pile. But uh, we did notice a very high variability within our study, and that's what we kind of attribute to not really having a, a very strong trend. Um, there was very high variability among the replicates, and uh, the study itself was conducted under a roof, and we added water um, based on when we uh, thought we might need water. So we had a very strongly uh, controlled experiment. We had very limited runoff. So we kind of think most of the uh, variability was just a sampling variability. Next slide, please. Available potassium was the same thing. We did have a slight trend towards increased potassium. Only the straw material, however, had a significant increase in the final concentration. And again, this was probably due to the increased uh, uh, reduction in the pile mass. And it's really, that's probably what it really is. A, a matter of having increase in pile reduction would trend towards giving you an increase in final uh, available nutrients. But that is one of the positives of uh, having a compost. Next slide, please. OK, organic matter, as you might suspect, when having a very high um, cellulose material such as wood, you would anticipate having higher organic matter in the wood materials. And that's what we found um, both initially and final uh, organic matter concentrations were higher in the wood materials. Um, and the uh, uh, with a, a numerical reduction, a slightly higher numerical reduction in the pelletized straw and the long straw. Um, now, some researchers indicate that they think that a reduction in organic matter trends to show a increase in composting. And that's probably part of what we, we saw in this study. Um, but we also do look at other things like bacterial life and such for uh, really indicating that composting has occurred and a few other factors that we'll talk about in just a second. Next slide, please. Now, we did notice some really interesting things in, when we talked about nitrogen in this study. The um, nitrogen, uh, the nitrate levels in the study for all materials uh, increased, suggesting that nitrification did occur. And as you know, nitrification is the, the first step in the degradation of organic matter during composting. So we did notice a slight increase um, in nitrate, suggesting that this did occur. Um, However, ammonium N did not decrease significantly during the composting cycle for any of the bedding materials, indicating that ammonium N was not completely converted to nitrate during this nitrification process, or that the organic matter was not completely degraded during the composting. Although not found to be significant during the study, numerical differences were observed in ammonium N reduction with both the wood materials resulting in greater numerical reduction in ammonium. So, the, redu the reduced final concentrations of uh, nitrate were, were not accompanied with an increase in, uh, in nitrate, excuse me, ammonium nitrogen, were, were not 
associated with the increase in nitrate nitrogen for the wood materials, um, which indicates that some of the losses were probably due to volatilization, whether it was during the um, thermophilic stages of the, of the composting process or through other means such as just straight volatilization or, or leaching through the piles from the uh, uh, water incorporation. So we did notice the trend to have actual composting occurring, although in particularly in the wood products, it wasn't complete, uh, complete composting, uh, chemically speaking. Next slide, please. Also, the carbon to nitrogen ratio was found to be higher in the wood materials as compared to the straw materials, with, with the pelletized materials tending to have a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio than the uh, raw materials, which is kind of interesting to me. I, I would imagine it, it is strictly a, a matter of the particle size and the particle density where we have uh, a tighter compacted product in the uh, pelletized materials, and you would suspect to have a higher carbon to nitrogen ratio in the wood materials relative to the uh, straw materials, which are a lesser, um, a little bit uh, more uh, hemicellulose and less cellulose. Um, we also, again, found no significant differences in the reduction of the pile mass, although a strong numerical trend was noticed, again, with a 42 percent reduction across the straw materials uh, compared to a 28 percent reduction on average for the wood materials. Now, and this is a, a quite a significant difference when we're talking, again, about a cartage uh, cost and the uh, limited amount of acres that we may have to spread. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, I just want to say composting certainly appears to be an effective manure management system, particularly in uh, high concentration uh, livestock operations like we have here in the Northeast, um, and particularly in New Jersey. We definitely do see a reduced volume and a reduced mass from uh, the composting process. And we did see a, a trend in, in certain nutrients, in particular uh, increased nutri nutrient concentration, if by no other means from a decrease in the, uh, the dent or an increase in the density of the material through composting. Our bedding materials uh, appear to influence the, the final physical and chemical properties of stall waste, um, particularly when we're looking at straw versus wood um, and the, the lineup of the cellulose and hemicellulose in these two materials is certainly one reason for that. Um, other research conducted also suggests that an aerobic system may provide increased, uh, uh, increased ability to use the composting process to uh, reduce this volume even more. This is the kind of system that we used here. We used a, a modified aerobic uh, system. Next slide, please. Uh, in this study, straw-based materials did appear to result in a material very well suited for land uh, application, um, both in the nutrient availability as well as in increased volume reduction. And again, this is particularly important for our small-scale operations uh, where we, we certainly are pushing the maximum density of our livestock. Um, other factors such as cost of these materials, and we, we did do a study um, that we'll report uh, in the future about the costs associated with this, um, with the different materials. And the labor uh, that is required to use some of these materials is slightly different, as well as the suitability for the operation, in particular some of the breeds of, uh, of, of horses that are uh, suited to some of these materials may be a little bit different for uh, depending on what type of an operation you are. Um, and these all, all these factors must be considered. 